Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherall and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today I want to do a fairly quick video because I still don't have a camera about the do's and don'ts of witchcraft. Witchcraft, as everybody knows, is intensely personal. It's all about you and how you perform your own craft. Some people are better at herbology, some people are better at spirit mediumship, some people are better at divination. It just depends. Some of us, like myself, are a bit of jack of all trades, a master of none. And so it's such a joy to me when I teach my students and they become much better than me. I always like it when that happens. Now, because witchcraft is so personal, it means that we will have different uses and there'll be different requirements depending on what we're practicing. However, there are some things that you should do whatever your path is and whatever you choose. And so this is what we're gonna go through now. Number one, and this is the most obvious one, write it down. Now I have a selection here, as you can see, all of these are old witchcraft books of mine. They're all journals from many years ago. This one, which is almost finished, is my current journal. And I write in everything that I do. You can see if I can just flick through. I don't write in it every day. Sometimes I don't write in it for a couple of months. It depends on what is happening in my life and what witchcraft I have been achieving of late. Have you ever heard of that old saying, the pen is mightier than the sword? Well, it is absolutely true. By writing down witchcraft, what you're doing is you're creating a spell. This whole book and all of these books here are essentially just books of actual spells that are happening or not happening or have finished or I've done as we speak. Now, I don't mean to say that if I cast a spell, I write it down, although that is one of the things I do. I just write down my mystical experiences, and this may involve spells. The act of writing it down creates its own strength. So do write it down. When I was first starting out in the craft, I became slightly obsessed with pendulums and I've got several of them. I've got a rather beautiful amethyst and snakehead pendulum here. I have a very clear quartz pendulum here. I have this rather beautiful uh, green quartz pendulum here. Although if I hold this up to the lens, you might be able to see, you might not because I don't have a good camera, how chipped it is. Um, that hasn't detracted from its power. The chip is because when I was using this particular pendulum, it was um, attacked by a demonic entity. I know you can think I'm as mad as you like on this one, but therefore the chip itself came out of the pendulum because it didn't work with the energy I was pushing through this pendulum. What it that did is remove that negative energy from it. It is a bit like a battle scar as a result on this pendulum. Now I've got these pendulums and the one that I happen to use all day, every day, is this one and this is my absolute go-to pendulum and I you know it's very similar to this one I mean who would say what's the difference between this pendulum which is a clear quartz and this pendulum which is a clear quartz quite simply this one resonates it's also got a rock spirit in it but you know that's neither here nor there this one resonates with me and although I have all these pendulums I only use one and so tip number two is do Use equipment that you just like. If you like it, you will use it more and you will have a better energy transfer with that piece of equipment. This moves me nicely on to the equipment itself. Now, if you look around my office, you'll see a lot of it is actually just scavenged from the wild. And I mean literally scavenged. As I walk along the beach or I walk along the hills or wherever I go, I will pick up and use varying items and I'll collect these over several years. You don't need to go out and buy feathers. Just collect them from where they've fallen. You don't need to buy dried flowers. You can pick the wild flowers around you and dry them yourself. If you like them and you like their smell and you like that scent, they will work much better for you than they would for somebody else. So my tip number three is to use 
the natural ingredients that the world provides us. These natural ingredients have something called earth magic in them, which is the magic of the world itself. And one of my most magical things is this fossilised shell. This is, is something I should do a video on, actually, because I'm not sure if you're ready to learn about how magical this object that I'm holding in my hand is, which is simply a fossilised shell. And it presented itself to me, which is often how I get these things. Maybe I'll do a video on it one day. So do go outside and scavenge and forage for the equipment that you might use. You want a wand? I'm sure there's a tree out there that'll give you one. Magical objects have a way of presenting themselves to you. Magic will find you if you are involved in magic. You pick up an object because you're drawn to it. There is a likelihood that that will object will have lots and lots of magic within it. My next one is to say, don't think you are imagining anything. I'm always saying to people, you know, what is imagination? What does imagination actually mean? If I was to sit down and write a story about a girl who turned into a rabbit and ran into the woods, then that would be me using my imagination. Your mind does not play tricks on you. There can be tricks of eyesight, I suppose, occasionally, but you normally then look at them and go, oh yeah, it was just clothing. I've never come across a trick of the mind before, apart from in mental health issues like schizophrenia. If you see something, whatever it is, out of the corner of your eye and think it's real, then it is. You know, you don't just make this stuff up. You don't walk around all day in the office, do you, and make stuff up. So if you think that you've experienced something paranormal or occult, then you probably have. And write it down. And my final do for witchcraft is go out and find like-minded people. Now you can go on Facebook, there's plenty of Facebook groups of online covens. You can come and join my online coven. However, find those people with the same mindset as you. Once you mix with these sort of people, you'll find that your magical capability improves beyond measure. But you need to get together with other people because that's how you expand your knowledge and expand your mind. There is only so much you can read from in a book that literally gives you the bare bones. And so people often ask me, um, do you know of any books? And my books are almost childish in the recommendations that I give because they just give you the bare bones and you have to go and research the magic and the energy and the happenings and the connections yourself. So go out and find yourself a like-minded set of people to work with. The more you do so, the more your mind will be expanded and you will realise how great you can become. So final tip of the day is join a coven. Maybe you'd like to join mine, get a patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall, or come and join me on retreat. I think I've only got three places left at the moment, so they're going a bit fast. Hurry up and book if you want one. And most importantly, if you'd like to help me get a new camera so I can film these videos without having to steal and borrow and beg from all my friends and family, could you please buy a raffle ticket? Just go to raffle.com forward slash Ginny Medwell for only £1.50. And there's some great prizes to be won. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me. Do like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.